All right, we have made it to episode seven. How about that? Let's give us all a round of applause because, uh, as many of you might have heard in the first episode, the average podcast actually uh, dies or stops uh, recording after seven episodes. Uh, and I know for us, this is a daily show, so it is uh, one week. Uh, and we're not stopping anytime soon. We're riding this high. Uh, and I just want to give a shout out and thank you to everyone that's listening. Thank you guys for sharing this on social media. Uh, make sure you tag me, uh, I social fans with a Z or a Z there at the end. Um, and, you know, on this episode, we're going to cover kind of, you know, we're going to talk, you know, the NFTs and, and Web3. But one of the biggest questions I get, and I, I'm getting some pushback even from my community, is around, you know, why are we on Discord? And how has Discord become like the de facto NFT hub? And, and what does this all mean? And I will tell you, you know, I, I've shared this a couple of times. I came in the Discord uh, kind of kicking and screaming. And part of it for me was, you know, the the platform, you know, itself. I, I, I liked the platform uh, from a standpoint of like, you know, it's layout, it's UI. But you know, I understood, you know, my background, I worked uh, in deploying uh, SharePoint uh, for the Department of Defense uh, back in the early 2005, 2010. Uh, and so for me, like deploying uh, software that's focused on collaboration and community, like what Discord is built around, um, for me, I know requires architecture, it takes community management. It also requires lots of tweaking and, and managing of notifications. And, you know, interestingly enough, the NFT community has really you know, found themselves on two channels that mainstream um, isn't really hyper you know, aware of, or maybe they gave up on, uh, and that being Twitter and Discord. And the the question I've been getting answer a uh, question I've been getting asked a lot was why. And I think the answer is actually in the beauty of what the NFT Web three crypto space uh, really what does it mean? And part of that is just this idea that it for for especially for nfts and we can talk about other places too for the an nft project to work and for this environment and this community to thrive it requires a massively diverse range of skill sets everything from an artist or a creative to a developer to an investor to someone that understands uh crypto and coding to the smart contract side and oftentimes it's also a cross-section of people that become collectors and that are playing in this space and it was really evident for me in new york when we were in new york for nft nyc i couldn't believe i mean i try that's my full-time job is a full-time professional speaker you know and digital futurist and i go to events all all around the world, been to hundreds of thousands of events, uh, in the thousands of events actually. And for me, it was one of the most unique and eclectic groups of people. And when different panels would like, ask the audience, how many people are devs or how many people are artists or, uh, just us running into people, I was amazed at all of the different walks of life that were represented. And I believe that's partially why Twitter is the the platform for so many of us. And if you haven't been on Twitter in a while, uh, first of all, you should definitely should come back. It's not the same platform it used to be maybe when you tried it out before. But, you know, Twitter has been my favorite platform for 11 plus years now. It's the it's the app I open up first in the morning. It's the one I close last at night. It's uh, I've been actively tweeting there every single day for forever. But Right now, I believe it's the best it's ever been. The innovation around Twitter spaces, uh, the idea of Twitter blue, Twitter communities that are out there right now, and really just the way the algorithm serves up information. And uh, I'm a big fan of using Twitter lists. I'll put a link here in the in the show notes here uh, for Twitter lists so you guys can see you know all of the things that evolve around uh, Twitter lists. And I think you know with Twitter, the thing that's beautiful about Twitter compared to like Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or Pinterest is Twitter is a platform. I always like to say this is my this is how I explain Twitter to people is I believe it is an unfiltered fire hose of real time conversations one on one happening in public. Let me say that again. Real time, a fire hose of real time conversations one on one happening in public. And what is beautiful about that is you don't have to like someone. You don't even have to know who they are. You don't even have to have mutual friends, which is what Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn are built their social graph on. But really, you're able to be come together around a common purpose or, or passion or a shared topic or maybe a, a trending hashtag. And to me, that's why Twitter is always such an amazing platform because it really is the true growth platform if you can use it for what it is. But also, your Twitter is great for real-time news and 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 you know you know kind of building that that uh, sense of virality and 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 movements. So definitely, movements have been thriving on Twitter, especially over the last three years or so. And 
it makes sense here for for crypto and, and NFTs and metaverse because a lot of this is real time and things are always changing and things are always evolving. And we also want to get our voices out and we want to be able to share links and, and comment and, and promote and you know other platforms. If you're sharing external links on Facebook, no, they don't give you any reach. Uh, nobody searches for people on Instagram. You're not going to dis- discover new people on Instagram. So Twitter just makes a hell of a lot of sense. But the problem with Twitter when it comes to you know really where this need comes from for this NFT community is how do I put like not only gates around it, but how do I organize things, organize conversations, organize content in a way that is consumable, not only in real time, but has evergreen components. And then also how do I factor in some other things that I can include, you know, that are out, you know, available to us today. And, and I believe that's why discord uh, makes a lot of sense. And, you know, discord was definitely built with gamers in mind in a way. I, I like to joke that we've kind of gone backwards in time a little bit here with discord as discord Discord is very, um, you know, it is very hierarchy based with permissions and very hierarchy based in the way that we um, are building out the different channels and the different categories. But for me, part of my my issue with uh, Discord from the start was the noise, the notifications, and understanding that if a you might have a thriving community, you might have a lot of active people in a, a Discord channel, but if you don't have an easy path for people to join the conversations or uh, understanding of people, how people can stay on top of what they care about, but not be annoyed by what they don't. Pretty much all of these, you know, these type of tools um, will have a short lifetime. And I, I learned that as I deployed a lot of social business collaboration tools for the government with IBM and Dell. Um, a lot of the things that we were doing with Slack and uh, with Mighty Networks and Circle And I will say part of what is beautiful about Discord is also what makes it really painful is that it is like kind of an open playing field where you can integrate everything from bots to um, giveaways to um, campaigns to videos to gifts. And there is this like sense of um, wild, wild west. And I do believe like, you know, when we're looking at Discord and I actually have Discord up in front of me, uh, I am recording this via video as well. So I'll post the video up on uh, on Inst- or on YouTube, on the YouTube channel uh, for those that want to understand kind of some of uh, the nuances because I'm going to kind of walk through as I'm explaining it. And don't worry, for those that are on podcast, this will still make sense. Uh, and I have two Discords open right now. I have one that's on the browser, um, which is a brand new Discord. Uh, and then I have the actual Discord um, app opened um, on my desktop, uh, which is has my Discord servers, which is almost 200 servers in that, in that, in that Discord. So I wanted to kind of show both um, sides of this. And I think one of the things for me, when I, if I'm trying to help people understand Discord and co- having them come on a Discord is you have to really take control and ownership for your own experience. If you go, if you know, when we first join a, a Discord channel and we jump into it, one of the first things that I always tell people to do is, you know, if you're unsure of the people that are in there or you don't want to, um, you know, you want to quiet the noise in the start, the first thing you want to do is go up to that the tab at the top. You're going to go down to privacy settings and you're going to turn off direct messages from people in the in the room, right? Because you're not going to want any of the spam or you don't want the people to be able to um, direct message you. And I, I definitely recommend, you know, depending on the actual community, it's good to have them on, right? It's, it's a great place for us to have um, active conversations, but it's also where people are, are dropping links and, and spam and, and things like that. And then the second setting that you're going to want to definitely check out when you are joining a new community is the notification setting. And I would argue, this is like my pet peeve, this is a soapbox a little bit for me, is that managing your notifications is the key to avoiding burnout and preventing you from living in a state of FOMO, which often often turns us into this idea of just deleting everything. And what I mean by that is people talk about unplugging and finding a balance I don't know about you guys, but like, there, I don't. I've never been able to find a balance. Balance to me is, I was, I was always a give and a get. For me, what it comes down to is, I need to manage and understand the notifications, and I need to know what what is something that is worthwhile that the that I wanted to stop or interrupt me with what I'm doing. And then there's other things that I want to be aware of it, but only when I when I log in to the actual solution or the platform. And so, you know, when you go to notification settings there in your Discord servers, and every time you join a new you know Discord server, it adds like another server and you're gonna go in there and change some of these settings. Is you know you can turn you could go in there and say uh, you know turn off mute all notifications until I turn them back on. And of course, it's not going to, you know, if someone still message, uh, you know, mentions you, like at mentions you, you'll still get a, a notification for that. 
But what I like about doing this is I'm a big believer of, uh, you know, of, of rather than having everything on and trying to turn certain things off, I like to have everything off and turn certain things on. And so what I like to do is I like to turn all those notifications off and then I go into the actual community and I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to really be aware of whenever there's posts in the ADHD coin um, section. I need to, I want to make sure that I don't miss any of those um, conversations that are happening. And so what you're going to do on that is you're actually going to, you know, right click on it, go to notification settings and then change it because it's going to be set to server default and you're going to change it to whatever you want to be notified on that one. So I like, I would change that to all messages. And so what I've noticed for me when I'm going into discord is I turn off all of the notifications and then I spend about 20 minutes going through each one of the channels and the categories that the, the team has set up and deciding, oh, you know what? I don't want to miss that. And the nice thing about it is you can always change it, right? You can always um, adapt as we go. But that's kind of how I look at you know, managing these notifications. And if you're doing this, if you're turning off direct messages and then you're turning on certain channels, like I would always say like, Keep the you know important links channel. Make sure that uh, that channel you always are getting messages, and then notifications is a channel that I always like to have. Uh, you know, or, no, I'm sorry, um, announcements because if if the the you know if the actual account is making big changes, they're going to put it in the announcements. Now I will say, not no two Discord servers are the same, but we are starting to see some structure and some layout that is very similar for a lot of us, which I think is a good thing because we start to see a little bit of structure, but we don't need copycats. And so, you know, I would always turn the notifications on for announcements, important links. Um, one of the other ones that I always like to turn the announcement or the notifications on for is if there's like a giveaway uh, server or, um, you know, on our server here that we're, we have up in front, um, I have a scavenger hunt one where we, where we do some giveaways and things there. And then of course, like you're going to want to make sure that, you know, the at mentions are on um, for some of the more popular channels. So rather than having, you know, all messages on say, I always want to make sure that I get notified if someone mentions my name and maybe, you know, the events one is another one. Now, on top of being able to do just these type of functionality, there's another thing that we can do in Discord that most people I don't believe are using correctly, and even I was not using it correctly for a long period of time. And what that is is you have the ability to actually take a like a public channel, so a channel that is um, posting publicly, um, and that is one that you don't have to have a certain role um, to be a part of. You can actually have that set up to where you are getting that in your servers that you actually provide, right? So. You know, one of the ones here on my on my uh, fan zone Discord, you can go to important links and you can click the word follow. And what happens when you click the word follow, um, if it pops up, is it'll actually say, where do you want to send this channel's updates to? Now, funny enough, I called mine Fanzo Updates, um, which it uses a short um, you know acronym for Fanzo's Updates, and it's called FU. <laughs> Thought that was pretty funny. But what's neat about that is now in this channel on my own server, which is the one that I can you know control my notifications on, I can actually have every time that there's a new post in these certain channels that are in another feed, I can have it sent to my one feed. So I can have, you know, if I if we flip over to my other Discord, I can actually have multiple servers giving me information into one location. Therefore, I don't have to click through all of this craziness that is multiple servers just trying to find, you know, where is it at that someone mentioned me or what did someone say about me and or how do I know, you know, what is what is what is good to follow and what is not good to follow. Now, I will say some of the platforms, some of the some of these channels um, they've done this very well. They make it really easy for us to be able to, you know, like, hey, I want to, I want to add, I want to follow this announcement one. But the there's not all of them. Not all of them have made that very easy. And so sometimes some servers don't even give you that option to follow the channel. But I do think that's one of the other ways that we can kind of um, streamline the noise and find some other unique ways to uh, use these uh, this Discord to our advantage. Now, the other question that I asked at the beginning of this episode was, you know, like, why are we there? And part of it is the bots and things that we can use, right? And so you can verify that people are actually, you know, holding your um, your NFT or the coin, you know, with, with our Discord server, we're gating it with ADHD coin. So when you purchase ADHD coin on the website, it'll automatically, um, you know, add that to your account. And then you can go into the, the actual channel that says bot commands, and you can just type in the command, and it'll verify and give you the role 
based on the the amount of coins that you have. And this is a very web three thought process, right? This idea that we can use bots and API. And, and what's neat about it is there's bots for just about everything, creating events. Um, there's bots for um, automatically onboarding people, for mon managing spam. Uh, there's ones where you can give out different ranks for people. And a lot of this is kind of like gamification and incentivizing you know, people to use the platform for people to come back in. But I would argue that if we are not doing a better job in Discord of helping people manage their notifications, many people are just going to forget about the server. I bet you some of you that are listening to this right now, you are part of the fan zone server and you haven't logged into it in months. And, and I understand that. And I'm trying to get better about knowing where to post, knowing when to tag everyone. It is kind of a learning curve um, in that way. And I will say some, you know, some of these channels, um, they've done a great job of that. And the other part of it that's kind of neat is different channels kind of manage things differently. And some of them, you know, that I really like are that, you know, if you are holding a rabbitar, a Playboy rabbitar, then you have access to certain channels that, you know, people can't get everywhere else. So you have to, it's only for people that are, are holding that NFT. And so maybe the conversation is a little bit more intimate or a little bit more um, in depth, or maybe it's a little bit of, hey, like this is a, a benefit that we're offering. Now I will say, you know, part of this that is difficult is I've caught, I've talked to a couple brands, a couple investors, uh, and there's some software out there that overlays on Discord to provide some data and reporting. But really, the beauty within this platform, the reason it exists, in my opinion, is that we are always being we we need a fluid, active, real time um, platform that allows us to have lots of different conversations in lots of different areas and serve the grand masses that are, you know, in the NFT community, but also be able to not just be everything in one public feed like most channels. And so when we look at the different um, channels that exist in different discords, and, you know, I know for the, in the video here that we're kind of walking through for those that are listening on the podcast, you can check out the video if you want to, you know, I'm showing you some examples of like the 200 plus servers um, that I'm a part of. And, you know, some of them are having like where they have different topics topics where you can jump in and see like the accountability topic and then other ones you know that you know the one that I just jumped in now this is the NFT community here you know it has 233,000 followers on here I actually haven't found this server very valuable and actually while we're here on here I'm actually going to go ahead and leave the server because although you know it is a server uh, serving the NFT community it's not one that's providing me much value and it's almost too much noise uh, for me to kind of take on right now and so you know, some servers are going to have much smaller kind of interfaces. Maybe it's because um, you're you're kind of really managing the way that these different conversations are being held. And then other ones are going to be massive, right? They're going to have, uh, you know, they're going to have different language channels. They're going to have different pieces. And so for us as users, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to this in two ways. For those of us that are Discord users, you're listening to this, you're not launching a project, but you're you're being asked to join different Discords. I believe we need to take upon ourselves to manage notifications, turn them all off, and then slowly turn certain ones on that matter to you. And then also, you know, make, um, you know, the, the, you know, those that are aware in the community of things that are, are good or not so good, right? Like I'm very careful not to use the, um, the everyone tag, which means it notifies every single person of a post. Um, I only use that for like very critical updates because I can see that if we're, we're using that too often, people are just going to mute that and it's going to be something that people are just going to, you know, turn off. Um, and, and now it has no value, right? Because as soon as people turn off all notifications, now it doesn't matter if you tag them or tag everyone, they're not going to find value and they're not actually going to, uh, you know, be able to come in and be a part of these conversations. The other thing that I would challenge us to do is, you know, just because you're in a Discord server and you're and you're and you're supporting a project, we have to manage like what is success for us. And like there are some projects that the only thing that I really want to know about that project is any updates that they have coming up, right? Like any announcements um, and any giveaways. But I don't believe like I'm going to be hyperactive in the actual individual community. And so I will only turn on maybe one or two uh, of the uh, notifications, or maybe I don't turn on any of the notifications. And instead, I just follow a couple of the, the more important um, channels that they have out there so I can bring that over into um, my, uh, you know, my server so I can manage it that way. And so I do look at this, you know, Discord as a necessary evil. Um, I will say, you know, back when I just kind of joined it, I felt a little overwhelmed and I only had a couple servers as you see uh, on the screen here, but it can get a little overwhelming when you start adding a bunch of servers. And the thing that I would say is, each time you're adding a server, look at the ones that you already have there and, and see if there's ones that you can remove, right? If it's no longer uh, adding a value to you and there's not something you're, you feel like you need to jump back into, feel free to leave um, that server. 
And then the last part of this is for those that are launching their own Discord server or that are launching their own project, or maybe you're managing or community managing the other server. You know, I believe that we have to have a massive focus on the education, educating not only new users, but educating even our power users, how to make people feel welcome and inclusive, right? I think one of the big mistakes that we're seeing here uh, in discords, but in the NFT community as a whole, is we look at community building as either a one-time thing or a front-loaded thing or something that we do and once we get it right, it will kind of operate on its own. And I'm going to tell you that's not the case. And so there's going to be plenty of chances for you to remove channels, for you to add channels, for you to, to, to re realign how people are incentivized, maybe even the different, um, you know, the categories that you have them in. And I also say, you know, we need to go out of our way to spotlight people and give people a reason to be in the Discord, which I, which I always say, what is in it for them? Now, for my Discord, for those that are part of uh, the Discord that I run here, FanZone, anyone can join it. You can jump in. One of the things that I do is I drop free coins. I give away, uh, just last week, I gave away over $2,000 to those that are engaging and active in there. Uh, we're talking, you know, we have different uh, channels for, you know, uh, mental health, for social media. We talk, of course, ADHD, since the coin is ADHD. Um, we have a lot of conversations around NFT. And then, of course, this podcast as well. Like, so for anyone that wants to follow along with the podcast and see, um, you know, maybe you want to, you want to suggest, um, a NFT that we should mint coming up. You can drop that in the, in the mint 365 channel. And so for me, part of what I try to do is I try to not only give people a reason based on those incentives, but also empower people to have conversations amongst themselves. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll kind of close this on this, my friends is that, you know, Community building from the start oftentimes is it's easy to kind of get that momentum. It's easy to kind of uh, start to see that growth. But scaling a community is extremely difficult. And most people, most you know, community developers, those that are, you know, that are growing a community, where they go wrong is that they either become too dependent on themselves as the creator to be the one that's welcoming people or they make it too much about individuals, a, a few individuals, that one niche group, or maybe it's just the, the cool moderators, or it's the people that have the most amount of money in the, in, that are you know, connected in the platform. And when you start making it about individuals and not about the common purpose and that shared passion that exists within the Discord walls, it becomes much more like a network and a lot less like a community. And the thing about a network is people are oftentimes leave a network when a friend leaves a network or they leave a network because um, the people that they cared about are no longer active in there. And that can be detrimental, especially for a Discord server. And so part of it is really connecting the people together, right? Be willing to tag other people. If someone asks a question and maybe you have the answer, but you know someone else in your community can also answer it, you know, tagging them in it so they can come in and have those conversations. And then also giving people kind of the power and empowering them to take more, um, you know, roles where they can, uh, you know, start their own conversations. Maybe they can even spin up their own uh, voice channels or their own video stages. And I, I, I will admit, I haven't got to that spot yet. I know we have a, we have a team now that's working with us here um, on the Fan Zone channel, and you know, it's aligned here with you know NFT 365 and, and our Mint 365 project. But I, I will say that's part of what, what our initiative is now moving forward is how can we be the facilitators, right? How can we get out of the way and really help the community connect with each other, thrive off of each other? How can we help the community take ownership in maybe some of the channels and some of the categories? And so if you're listening to this and you're currently active in the Discord and there's something that you would love to, like, hey, Brian, I would love to do, you know, post something in the, the social media channel once a week, or I would love to run a, you know, a morning coffee room in the morning, Brian, like, let me know. I'm going to tell you my answer is going to be yes. Uh, and in many cases for me, this is the beauty of it is I don't even want you to feel like you have to ask. And I will say I have a couple of ground rules. Like for me, it's about being nice to people. Um, it's about spreading positivity, not negativity. We don't break down people to make ourselves feel uh, taller. Uh, and it's also making sure that we understand the importance of, you know, exclusivity within different elements of a community can be powerful, but not when it's against inclusiveness or exclusive, you know, it, we start making this about like, you know, it's the, it's the in crowd and the out crowd. And I do believe there's a little of that in the NFT community as a whole on Twitter, as well as on, um, on discord. I think it's what inspired, uh, episode one that you guys listen to here on the podcast. But, um, I just want to put this out there is that, you know, we get to decide the culture and the communities that we are a part of that we spend our time in. 
Nobody, no matter how much money they have, has the ability to get more time in the day. We all have 24 hours in the day. Even Oprah and Beyonce have only 24 hours in the day. And so the question we have to start to ask ourselves is, how are we prioritizing that time that we're spending in even the discords that we're spending? And then also making sure that we understand why we are there and what, you know, what we're trying to get out of it. And remember, it's okay that you're, that you're trying to get out of something that, hey, I'm having a conversation about social media or I'm connecting with fellow people that like the video games I like. And then lastly, we also have to be okay with being, you know, understanding that we also just want to not feel alone. If I could give like one advice about what is the emotion or the feeling that a, a community should have, it's when people join it, they feel as though not only are they welcomed, but they have that feeling of these are my people. You know that feeling when you like, you walk into a room and like, you hear the way they're talking, the vernacular they're using, or maybe the way they're cheering or the way that they're, you know, the, the, the energy, like the vibe. And you're like, wow, these are my people. If we could make every Discord server kind of built to that, that would be magical because that would not only help us not feel alone, but also understand our own role. We would figure out how we can show up. We can figure out the different nuances there. So that's my challenge for everyone in the Discord, you know, in the Discord communities and where they're at. And I will also say the other part of Discord that we have to kind of factor in here when it comes to, you know, how we use these channels and, and what we're thinking about is we also have to be willing to test things out, um, try them and communicate them transparently. Um, I, I know that's something that we've seen some servers do wrong, where all of a sudden there was some uh, negative feedback being given in one of the channels and the, the team just decides to delete it, right? I don't think deleting is ever um, the answer. I do believe uh, about shifting tone towards positivity, but if it's feedback, we need to listen and learn from that feedback. And, and maybe we change how often someone can post in there so they're not spamming, but there is a big difference between creating an environment that thrives, that, uh, that empowers unique decision-making and unique conversations, and creating a silo of a bunch of the same people that are nodding heads, and, and it's that, that, those are the things that we do not need more of in this world. So I am a big believer in that, you know, putting the gates around uh, your Discord server of having different levels based on different things that you want to set up. I am a big believer in also understanding what your mission are. You can't serve everyone and can't be there for everyone. But there is something to be said. There's a couple NFTs that I hold that part of the reason I haven't sold my NFT is because I don't want to leave the community. And I know if I sell the NFT, the community that I'm going to, that, that, that I'm no longer going to have access to some of the members in the community and the conversations that I really enjoy. And think about that from a value add in NFTs. We talk about utility all the time, but the word community is thrown around way too much. Just because you have a Discord server does not mean you have, have a community. Just because you have a, a, twi a large Twitter following does not mean you have community. Just because you have an email newsletter does not mean you have community. Community is truly all about this idea of having bringing together people around a common purpose and a shared passion. And now the thing that we need to do with that with something like Discord or even with our Twitter is leverage the tools not to solve people problems, but rather to scale, to amplify, and to organize all of the real-time conversations that we want to happen. I do believe Discord's like true value is in fostering conversations, empowering a feeling of community, and ultimately connecting through content and through you know the bots and the way that we're able to gate in a Web 3.0 environment. So with that, you know, coming, uh, it's even funny me recording this episode because if you would have asked me at the beginning of 2020 uh, or 2021. If I was going to be a fan of Discord or I was going to you know, make Discord the platform, you know, the, the platform that I have up the most on my computer, I would say not a chance. But I've learned to, to toggle it, to manage it for myself, and I'm still adjusting it. I'm still managing some of the notifications. And I'm also using different notification settings on my phone versus my desktop and even it's on my iPad um, because depending on what device I'm on also depends on how I want to be notified or distracted. So hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of insight, a little views into um, the world of, of Discord and Twitter and why they, why they work. I do believe they are not going away. If you ask me besides podcasts, the best place for information on NFTs, on crypto, on metaverse is Twitter and then finding Discord servers to uh, be a part of. The best way to get your, your project um, in front of the most 
most amount of eyeballs, jump into Twitter spaces, and be active in the communities that you hold a, a coin on. Not, it's not about selling yourself. It's not about you know, um, shilling yourself everywhere you go. It's rather about connecting with people and sharing your story because you'll be amazed. They'll start asking you, how can they support you? What can they do to be a part of what you're doing? And uh, with that being said, we did uh, open up a little bit of a white list for our season passes for the Mint 365. Uh, today we did Mint um, our seventh NFT, um, and that NFT was uh, the Merry Mods. Um, it's an NFT that was put out by the uh, you know, Impact Theory team, um, Tom um, and uh, his wife, uh, Lisa, and um, should be a, a pretty fun one to, to be a part of. Uh, and so we are going to uh, tomorrow, uh, or for everybody that's listening to this, uh, we will have like the landing pages up and uh, more places for you guys to find out about how you can get involved with those season passes. Um, if you want to get in on the whitelist, go to ADHD coin.com and scroll down about halfway and you'll see uh, how you can uh, jump in on the whitelist. But we have big things planned. We are not only going to have more guests and more conversations. Uh, we have some sponsors that we've now uh, brought into the loop. Uh, and we're also going to take this podcast on the road. There is a couple events uh, in the NFT crypto web three space that is asking us uh, to bring our, our podcast there and record live. So uh, lots of big things ahead, my friends. Uh, I wish you an amazing day. We are going to be live. We're going to be kicking and, and going hard. Uh, we're not stopping on the holidays uh, as well. And so um, hopefully everyone is uh, on board with us. And you know, if you do have the time, I would love a review on your favorite channel, uh, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, whichever platform you are listening to this podcast on. Uh, and last but not least, uh, if you share it out, uh, the podcast, make sure to tag uh, myself, I social fans on it so I can amplify it so I can say thank you. And I always say when you're sharing something, don't just share the podcast episode, share like a soundbite or maybe an impact that the show has had on you or maybe something that you like that aha moment or even a reason you think others should be listening to this podcast as well. You know, that means sharing it in email, sharing it via Facebook groups, uh, even sharing it you know via text message and some dark social. So till next time, my friends, make it a great day.